Hey guys, in the fast lane here. In this video, we're going to be changing brake pads and rotors on a 2003 Cadillac CTS. Now this should work all the way up to 07 models. If you need to purchase items in this video, you can purchase them on my website. It'll say shop this video underneath the video. If you're on my YouTube channel, it'll say shop this video at the top comments. I always pin it to the top comments or it'll be in the about me section. Special thanks to Buy Auto Parts for sending out these parts. Now what we're going to use for the job is we have a C-clamp, we have the brake pads, and we have drilled and slotted rotors for this assembly. We got some brake cleaner, and we're going to use some anti-seize. Now one of the first things you're going to want to do is get a block of wood and just put it under the rear tire. Now make sure that your vehicle's in park, and now we can get started. Here's the points where you're going to put the jack and jack stand. So for the jack stand, you see this arrow right here and that lip, that's where you're going to put the jack stand. And then if we come over here, this is where you're going to put the jack. So the jack is going to actually go all the way up under here and it's going to be on the frame of the vehicle. So try not to put it on that bolt right there for the transmission mount. Now I like to use extra precaution. I always leave the jack underneath there when I lower it down under the jack stand and just a little bit of tension underneath the subframe so you don't have any problems. Now these aren't actually the lug nuts themselves. These are little fixtures that go over top. And most of the time you can't really get them off by hand. So you're gonna take a 19 millimeter six point socket and you can just gently take them off. Now you go ahead and take the 19 and we'll take off these lug nuts. Now that the lug nuts are off, we can go ahead and bang the tire and knock it off. Just give it a couple good whacks and we'll move it on out of the way. Now on the back side here, there'll be a picture that you can see. There's two 17 millimeter bolts. There's one on the top and there's one on the bottom. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put a crescent wrench on this bolt in front of it that goes into the carrier. And I'm just gonna use a crescent wrench. It's more than likely 18 millimeter. A 17 doesn't fit. It's just a little bit bigger than a 17. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the crescent on there just to hold in place. Mostly you don't have to, but just to do it right, I'm gonna stick the impact in the back here. And remember, lefty loosey, righty tighty. So if you're taking this bolt off, you're gonna pull the wrench towards the back of the vehicle. And those are pretty clean. Looks like they've never come off. Now that both of the slider bolts are off, we're going to go ahead and slide this caliper off. And I like to keep a bungee cord so we can hang the caliper up so we just don't hang it down. So you're just going to pull it straight out like this. Take uh, just anywhere you can hook it on, maybe where the bolt was. And then I'll just strap it up here somewhere in between the upper control arm. Just get it out of the way. And that's it. Now we'll go ahead and remove the pads. So you're just going to pull them straight out like this. And those, those are getting a little war. One thing to look for is, is when your pads are wearing, if they're uneven, it's because one of the guide bolts in the carrier uh, either ran out of lubrication or it kind of seized up from rust. So if you turn your pad sideways, I can see how this one is a little bit thinner than the back side. So if I pulled it out like this, then that's telling me that this uh, guide right here and this carrier needs to be cleaned and greased. Obviously we're going to do it anyway, but that's just a good telltale. Also, you can see the line here in the brake pad. Well, when you can't see it anymore, that's pretty much a telltale that it's completely done and you need new pads. Also, one other thing to look at is this is a, it's a telltale. Basically, when the pad gets too low, it starts to rub on the rotor and it starts to scratch. When it starts to scratch the rotor, if you let it go for too long of a time, it can permanently damage the rotor. So that's another thing to look at. This one actually had a little bit of life left. On the back side here of the carrier, there's two 18 millimeter bolts. We're gonna go ahead and remove those and take out this carrier assembly right here. Now 
Now we're going to go ahead and take a 30 Torx bit and we're going to go ahead and break this last bolt on the rotor. Let's put it in there. Now there's two ways to do this. They have a punch tool where it's like a hammer. You hammer it and as it pushes in, it turns. You hold it on there and you hit it with a hammer and it'll turn it with the Torx bit on it or you can just do it with a good old fashioned impact gun. Now we'll just pull this off and that's pretty much it. Now a quick little tip is, is you might as well give your wheel bearing a spin. And mine seem to be really good. If yours sound like real rough grinding or um, they can wiggle in and out if you grab it, usually you'll do this with a tire on there and you can turn it back and forth. That'll let you know that you got a bad wheel bearing. I have videos on that. If you need to look, it's probably a couple videos down or if you're on my website, just check out drivetrain under the automotive repair videos. Now this is where the anti-seize and the multi-purpose grease and stainless wire brush comes in to play. So we have the carrier. We're gonna take off these stainless steel guides and we got to clean these out. Now I'm not going to hit them just yet with a wire brush. I'm just going to give you an example. Then I'm going to put on a mask because I don't like to breathe in any of this stuff. And you shouldn't either. So I would suggest wearing a mask and putting on some safety glasses in case one of these wire brushes comes off and gets in your eye. What we're going to do is we're going to go cleaning these in the whole thing basically. We want to get this down to as shiny as it can possibly be. And then we're going to place them back in. We're going to clean out here with the wire brush, all these. I'm gonna take these ones off. All you do is pretty much pull them out. They got little clips, clean them off real good. Then next, we're gonna take out the guide bolts and all you do is pretty much just pull straight out and we're gonna clean these completely off with some paper towel. So we're just gonna strip them all down, just down to the bare metal. If yours happen to be rust it out and they're still good shape, but there might be a little pitting. You can take some, I'd say maybe 200 grit paper or something or some steel wool, clean them up really good. And then we're gonna lubricate them with the multi-purpose grease. Just kind of dip it in there, get it all, and then we're gonna put them back in. So once you clean them up, put them back in, there's really no way this goes in. You just stick it in, it can turn left, right, it doesn't matter. As far as length, they're both the same length, so if you accidentally put one in the other, it won't matter either. So I'm going to go ahead and clean these up, clean these two guide bolts up, re-grease them, and stuff them in there. Now a mask I like to use is a Miller mask. Fits really nicely on your face. I use it welding, and I'll go ahead and put it in my store. So the shop this video button or link at the top comments, or if you're on my video, it'll say shop this video under video. All, everything I use in this video is going to be on my website. Now we're going to go ahead and take out the sliders. Just clean them all off, get all the grease off of them. And just kind of dip them in the grease. Make sure you get it all over the entire guide bolt or slider bolt. I like to overdo it and then I like to put just a little bit in the front here to get it started so you push it back. There you go. That's one and do the same thing to the next one. And this will make that pedal feel real nice. So when you're pushing down, plus the pads won't get stuck and they won't start to wear uneven as I explained earlier. All right, we'll just clean them up and then it should be ready to go back on the vehicle. So we'll go ahead and put the pad clips in 
and they pretty much just go like this just slides right in like that and if they're a little loose it's no big deal when you put the pads in they'll uh, stay put so what I like to do is I like to take some anti-seize and this is Permatech all this will be in the cart and I'll always put it in right where the pads are going to slide so I'll put a little there little there right here and I'll do the same thing to the other side this just makes it so that it doesn't stick next we're going to install the brake rotor the pads also come with some synthetic molly brake grease and I'll go ahead and open up these pads first we're going to go ahead and put this rotor on with the torque bolt and then we'll put the carrier on now something that needs to be pointed out before you go and install these rotors is you need to install them the right direction now this particular rotor right here is a driver's side it's for the rear and I'm just using this as an example but inside here we have veins and with aftermarket rotors they change the pitch of the veins now some of the veins are straight down which these little guys in here these are straight down and those are universal but with some manufacturers and some designs they make the veins curve a little instead of being straight up they'll have them angled so you have to have the rotor if this is the driver's side and it was put on the passenger side that would change the angle of the veins so we can't have that so pretty much you have to make sure that you're putting them on on the box it'll say driver side or passenger side so pay attention to that but if you look closely and I'm gonna see if I can't get a shot of it this vein right here has it's angled right about there now this would be straight so they got a like a 30 to 45 degree angle on that vein so now we're gonna go ahead and put the rotor on but before we do we gotta line up the little Torx bolt right here where that went with the rotor so we got to figure out which one looks like we'll put it here just like that and this guy I would just get hand tight as far as torque specs there might be one I'm sure there's always a torque spec but if you want to be safe probably like 10 foot pounds maybe if that maybe eight I'm personally just going to hit it with the impact gently and that's it. Now's the time to go ahead and spray the brake rotor down with brake cleaner and you do this right before you put the pads on because you don't want to wash off any of the grease or anything and the anti-seize that's on the sliders. So just hit it up a little bit, just hit both sides. Now we're going to go ahead and install the carrier or they also call it the support bracket and this is going to be torqued down to 96 foot pounds these two 18 millimeter bolts so we're going to put it like this now this goes underneath the control arm and then the bolts go through the control arm all right, so I got the torque wrench tightened up to 96 foot-pounds. And when you're done, always loosen it all the way back to zero because you want your torque wrench to last. So it's an 18 millimeter, six point. Ninety six foot pounds is going to be fun on the ground. There we go. Ninety six foot pounds. Now that we have the carrier installed, we're going to go ahead and install the pads right before we do. We're going to take some of this assembly. Uh, molly lube grease whatever 
Uh, you can use the other grease multi-purpose Valvoline that I used. You can even use anti-seize if you want to. It's not going to hurt anything. So I'm just going to take a little bit and we're just going to put it right on the edges. And then a little on the edges right here. Kind of didn't tear this very well. And this is just going to keep it from sticking. And then we're going to stick a little bit on the break of the back of the pad. So let me just get a little bit out there. Just kind of rub it. This one has dual pistons on the caliper. So kind of anywhere you rub it's going to be going to be good. Pretty much like that. We're not making art here. So this one's going to go on the back side. I'll do the front first. This actually has a little bit of grit to it, so I imagine it helps it. You don't you want to use it all because you got two more pads on the other side. Okay, so that's what we're looking at. So now we'll take it and we're just going to stick this in that slider. Push down. And you might have to push up on some of them. These ones actually come with a little bit of slide on them. So we did to that one and we're going to do the same thing to the back. You're going to start in like this and then work your way in. So go down on the bottom, pull them together, and that's it. Now what we need to do is compress these pistons on this caliper. Now we have two options. We can use groove joint pliers or we can use a C-clamp. So first I'll show you how to do it with the groove joint pliers. You're going to open it up pretty wide. Let me go ahead and take this off. And you're going to get your plier pretty much as wide as it can go. You're going to stick it like this and you can squeeze in if you can get wide enough grip. Just like that. Now I compress that one all the way in as you can see and when I go to compress this one it might push the other one out. I'm just not sure yet. It's kind of hard to get in here. All right, let's see. Nope. So there you go. So I pushed them both in. If one comes out you just hit it again. Now a lot of people say take the cap off under the hood of the reservoir. And I'll show you that last when I finish up. I don't like to do it because it spills out brake fluid all over the place. Uh, most people put rags in there. I personally just compress them and I've always leave the cap on. So that's possibly a personal preference. That's the way I do things. So for the C-clamp, basically you're just going to open it up. So you got it opened up and then you're just going to tighten it. until it gets flush. Now you might have to go back and forth a couple of times because these are brand new pads so they're going to take up the full width of that caliper. Sometimes they don't but most of the time they're, they get pretty close so just keep going back and forth until they're all flush. Now that they're flush we're just going to kind of hand wipe off these pistons. And I'm going to take some of the molly lube, a little bit, and we're going to run it around the pistons. Just like that. Now we'll take the caliper and slide it over the pads. And on the back here, the sliders, you're going to have to pull the sliders in a little bit. So push the sliders in so that the caliper can slide over it. Then we're going to take our 217 millimeters, stick them in the back. Now we're going to set our torque wrench to 46 foot pounds and we're going to torque in the two slider bolts.
Now before we go torquing it, get your crescent wrench or your 18 millimeter. You're gonna hold the bolt prior. And that's it. Now before you go drive the vehicle, just get in the vehicle, start it up, and pump the brake a bunch of times, and you should be good to go. Now if before you assemble the carrier, you want to go ahead and paint it, you can paint it with some high temp paint. That's fine. It won't hurt anything. You can also high temp paint your brake caliper. So if that's something that you want to consider doing, I'll go ahead and put the high temp paint in my store so you can purchase it. I personally didn't want to go ahead and paint mine because I'm right now there's no ventilation and there's a lot of mosquitoes out. So I'd rather just do it this way and avoid getting tore up. The brake reservoir is located right over the driver's side tire. If you need to access the brake reservoir to fill it up, you can put dot three in right here by opening this cap and pouring it into the fill level it shows. Three, three, four, three, four, three, four, three, four,